All right, so we're gonna try and do some vector ones. I apologize that this isn't in the room like usual, but I left my tripod and a bunch of my other things back up at the school, and so we're gonna make do. I wanted to go ahead and get this material available for everyone, and I shall step over here to stop blocking the light. Unfortunately, we're going to end up with something very old school, which is gonna be the chalkboard. I'll try and avoid that in the future. Let's see if we can go through this. So. We're going to start off with one example problem with vectors, and this one is going to be one that we talked about in class, but we'll go ahead and solve it again just so we're familiar with it. This is going to be one that we go from Edmund North up to Stillwater, OSU. Okay. Now, hopefully I'm not cutting that off. I've got how high this is going, but let me draw it a little bit more centered, just to be safe. We'll go up and over to OSU. Now, if I were trying to get someone there, I could describe these as two vectors, vectors that they would go along. We've got A, and B, okay? And then in the end, to find out how far they actually ended up from Edmund North, we would end up with one other vector that starts at the very beginning at Edmund North and ends up at OSU, okay? So this is actually a very simple vector addition problem where we had vector A plus vector B equals vector C. Okay, well, taking a look at this, and my friend Google Maps gave me that A is pretty much equal to 32.7 miles due north. So in this case, we'll say at 90 degrees because A points straight up. So it has 90 degrees with respect to the positive X axis. And so this is our A, and it's got a length of 32.7, okay? Well, B is equal to 19.9 miles at zero degrees, because it points straight to the right. And that gives us an angle of zero degrees with respect to the positive x-axis, okay? So, as we've seen before, this guy is what we want to do, but we can't just add them together because that's just adding these numbers. It doesn't take into account these directions. So we need to split this guy up into AX plus BX equals CX and AY plus BY equals CY. When we do this, we're splitting them up such that it keeps track of this direction for us, okay? So that's something that we can do. Well, in this case, this one's pretty simple because A, our vector A, it points straight up. None of it is in the x direction. So it's x component, A sub x equals zero. And A sub y, well, because none of it is in the x direction, that means all of it is in the y direction, and I probably should have turned that off. So, our a sub y is actually equal to the total length of our vector because none of it is in the x direction. Okay, so let's look at b of x, oops, not zero, and b of y, okay. Well, our b of y for the same reason that a sub x was zero, our b sub y is going to be zero, because all of it is in the x direction. None of it is up and down. So in this case, that one's zero. And the whole thing, 19.9, is in the x direction. Okay, well when I add these together, I end up that c of x equals 19.9 miles and C of Y equals 32.7 miles, okay? Now we know our components of C. So we take one final step. We know that our X component of C, I'm gonna draw it over here, 
is positive 19.9 miles, and our y component is 32.7 miles, also positive. And so our resultant vector, this is our c sub x, our x component, and this is our c sub y, our y component. And so our total vector here, c, well, we can solve the triangle. And we'll also want to find the direction because a vector has both a magnitude, its total length, and a direction. So we need both the length of this guy and that angle. So let's take a look at the length first. We'll use Pythagorean theorem because this is a right triangle. We're able to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared because this triangle is a right triangle. Okay? So when I solve for that, I will have that c equals the square root or I should say the magnitude of C, equals the square root of 19.9 squared plus 32.7 squared, both of which are in miles. Okay, And we end up with that our C is equal to, let me see, where did I write that? Ah, 38.28 miles. Okay, And our final thing that we need is we need this theta. Okay, well this is a right triangle. We have our opposite side over here because it's across from our angle. We have our adjacent side here because it's right next to the angle. So if I have tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, well, my opposite side is my c sub y, my adjacent side is my c sub x, okay? And so I can plug those in. Let me get a little bit of space here. Erase part of that and we'll do it right in there. I can plug in the numbers. This guy is 32.7. This guy is 19.9. And so now I want to take this and solve for theta, so I'm going to take the inverse tangent. So I can get rid of this tangent. Those two cancel each other out. And that means I need to take the inverse tangent of this side. So I find that theta equals tangent inverse of 32.7 over 19.9, and that gives me that theta is equal to 31.3 degrees. So my final answer, I'm going to write it right up here, since that's where I have room, is C is equal to my total length, my magnitude, 38.28 miles at an angle of 31.3 degrees, okay? And that's with respect to our x-axis. I could also, since this is from a map, I could say that this is 31 degrees north of east. So we pointed east and we turned 31.3 degrees north, and that's our angle. But for now, I'm trying to give this as a more general one. So. We're going to have it with respect to our positive x-axis, and that's what we've got.